So the iPhone 14 Pro came out just last week and one of the biggest features and a huge change from last year's model is the dynamic island. Out of the 40 plus dynamic island use cases, I've picked out my top 10 favorite features. And I've ordered them from kind of boring but useful to really cool and really useful. And these should give you a great idea of how the dynamic island works. Coming in at number 10, we have power and charging alerts. So this kind of demonstrates the most basic application of the dynamic island with these very smooth, elegant notifications for things like low power alerts and charging status. Of course, these alerts are available on other iPhones without the dynamic island, but the implementation here is still really well done. It's super clean and it looks great. At number nine, we have AirPods connection. So whenever you connect your AirPods, this animation will pop up which shows you the AirPods and their remaining battery life. This is a case where the functionality isn't necessarily that different. On other iPhones, you still get a pop-up when AirPods are connected, but in my opinion, it looks less invasive and more natural with the Dynamic Island, and it takes up less screen real estate in the process. For number nine, we have the timer. When you start a timer, you can see the time remaining on the right side and a visual graph of the timer counting down on the left side. And if you wanna interact with it, you can press and hold, which will give you access to pause or cancel the timer without having to actually go into the app. And number seven, we have phone calls. So if you're on a call, the island will display the length of that call and you can long press for access to speaker controls and the end call button. Now you might be wondering what happens when two apps are trying to use the island at the same time, and it has a pretty interesting way of handling this. So say you're on a phone call and you start a timer, the island will basically split into two separate pieces. So you can still access up to two apps at the same time. Moving on to number six, we have voice memos. So whenever you start a voice recording, you'll get the time duration and the audio waveform and you can long press to get access to the stop recording button. Now at number five, we have music and media controls. If you're listening to a song or a podcast, you'll see the album artwork and another waveform of whatever you're listening to. And a long press will bring up the player controls. Coming in at number four, there's AirPlay. Whenever you're AirPlaying content from your phone to another device like an Apple TV or a laptop, you'll have your player controls always available with just one long press. On other iPhones, you have to disrupt the entire screen to access these same controls, so it's just much more convenient with the dynamic island. Breaking into my top three features, and this is where things start to get really useful in my opinion, we have AirDrop. And what I love about this one is that you can see the progress of whatever file or files that you're transferring. On other iPhones, you're pretty much in the dark during the transfer process and don't really know anything until after the transfer is complete. So this is where I can definitively say the Dynamic Island is a huge improvement. And the same can be said for number two on my list, maps. When you're using maps to navigate to a destination, you'll be able to see your next turn and your distance to that turn. So you won't have to do that thing where you're constantly switching from maps to another app, back to maps. That information is now just always right in front of you. And my favorite use case so far with the Dynamic Island is for live sports scores. This is currently only available in the iOS 16.1 beta, but if you do install the beta, you'll be able to follow games through the Apple TV app and see the live score of that game right on the island. This is super useful for anybody interested in keeping up with the game without having to look up the score every five minutes. And if you expand the island, you even get additional details like play-by-play -play action, clock info, and more. This is actually one of the first implementations of the new live activities feature that's gonna be coming when iOS 16.1 is officially released. And live activities will allow for real-time updates for things like food deliveries and rideshare. I think it sounds really cool and I can't wait to see the ways that's gonna be used. So those are my 10 favorite ways to use the Dynamic Island at this moment. But keep in mind, this is just the beginning. Apple has opened the Dynamic Island API to third-party developers, so we're gonna start seeing way more support for this in the coming months, especially once iOS 16.1 and live activities are officially released to the public. Anyways, if you watched all the way to the end, I would really appreciate you subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next one.